Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Ashley Empowers. I'm Ashley Brown and I am the host of Dating With Purpose. Dating With Purpose is a series that we created to showcase and highlight couples from around the world who are keeping God first in their relationship and pursuing relationships that change their generational legacy for the better. Today I'm so excited to interview Anthony and Raquel Lee as they share their journey of Dating With Purpose. Welcome of you guys so happy and excited to have you here thank you so can we just start off with you guys introducing yourselves and telling us how you all met so i'm anthony lee uh, i met raquel at walt disney world on an internship and i'm raquel lee <laughs> <laughs> and i met anthony in orlando florida uh the year was 2015 okay. and actually 2014 and uh, I had just moved to Orlando, Florida after graduating from Texas Christian University. And I received an internship there for the Walt Disney College program. And so I moved from Dallas to Orlando and met this guy on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys were in the same program? Yes, yes uh, we met. And it was funny because one day we were going to the same location and she ended up with sleep on the bus, so I was like, hey, do you know so where... Long <laughs> okay. So she was wondering, hey, what stop is this? And I'm like, hey, this is the stop that you get off. So pretty much she got off before me, and it was just like, okay, you left, and that was it. We both went our separate ways, not thinking anything would come from just a simple interaction on the bus. Mm -hmm. So I ran off, I clocked in, I was like, oh, that guy was nice. He let me know where I was. And I didn't think anything of it until I saw him in my break room um, a couple weeks after that. And he was eating uh, some applesauce or like something mashed. And I found out that he had had a tooth extraction or something with his tooth. And so in Raquel fashion, I started giving him like suggestions of other things that he could eat because who just eats applesauce all day? And uh, we just strike the conversation, and five years later, here we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how did you guys get from being in the internship to actually dating? Sure. Um, so at the time, we were both in relationships, and um, there wasn't a lot of us in the internship program that really related um, with our background. And so we would all hang out. There was a group of friends, and Anthony was my friend. And so... Um, we ended up just getting to know each other, like learning more about him, him learning more about me. And uh, I decided to leave the program in uh, August of that year. And uh, I didn't think anything of it. Like I knew I had made great friends. We'll keep in contact. And Anthony ended up always texting and calling me while I came back home to Dallas. And so I was like, man, he's really nice and thoughtful. I was going through a lot at that time. And so really became a shoulder to lean on and that's really kind of how everything materialized. Yeah, so you were still in Florida at the time? Yes, uh, finishing up my internship and me finishing up my program, I still had to finish uh, my last semester in college. So okay. with me finishing my last semester, it was like, hey, this is a girl that, one, I had two options after I finished school, stay in Virginia or find somewhere else to live. So I was like, hey, finish Virginia State, let me go back to Florida. But continuing to talk to Raquel, uh, I was like, let me pursue this more because somebody, one, that cared for me or just basic conversation seemed like she genuinely cared. So she gave me my third option of having another place to go. So uh, I visited Texas on a, a break and her father just had that conversation. So we were just talking and it's funny because I remember to this day, he was like, you're done with school in uh, September or before school started. He's like, you're not going to move out. Nobody really thought that I was going to move out to Texas and just kind of start a life. So he gave me a deadline of September 28th or August 28th. And I came out here a few days before then because it was like, I just really wanted something different besides Virginia when I was done with school. Yeah. So at the time, you didn't have a girlfriend. You were finishing up 
your internship, finishing up college, yes. and you were like, hey, well, maybe let me try Texas out. Were you guys in a relationship at that point? We were. So by okay. that point, we were dating. I honestly did not think this man was moving to Dallas. Like, okay. <laughs> every time we would talk on the phone, I was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm, yeah, you moving here. Oh, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. And he showed up at the airport. And so I knew that he was really pursuing my heart, being intentional about courtship and uh, really building relationship. I had never had a man to pursue me in that way. Um, I tell a lot of my friends even to this day, like I never had to beg Anthony to be with me or, you know, I think as women, it can be difficult. Like when you're liking someone or, oh, what are his intentions? Having the talk with him, like, what are we? Anthony always established that up front. He was always pursuing me, um, very vocal about what he wanted. And he followed that through to the end. And he moved here in uh, 2015 and in Ended up proposing, and wow. here we are. So you knew that you wanted to be in a relationship and be married one day. I honestly, at one point, no. But meeting Raquel after a while, uh, I think it really hit me when she came back to Disney for her working at Time Joiner, and it was just that one event. And we were on the bus getting ready to go to. Uh, what was it, Cracker Barrel. Oh, okay, yeah. And I told her, give me five months. And that five months, I did not know what was gonna come in that five month span. And in five months, I was in Texas. Mm -hmm. And one day I was telling my mom, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna marry this girl. And she thought we were gonna be engaged when I was going back home for college graduation. But I ended up surprising her the day before Thanksgiving in okay. 2015. So it was kind of, it was funny how it went down, but I was like, I couldn't wait any longer. So her going home to meet my family, I'd rather have made that official before I went home. So it wasn't, uh, oh, two celebrations in one. I wanted yeah. to do something different. Yeah. And so you knew that he was interested in you by his actions. Absolutely. And it was, not, it was no question that oh. he was interested. Yes. So what role has faith had in you guys' relationship, in your relationship with God? Mm, faith has been everything. Honestly, faith is the reason we're still here and speaking to you. We've really hit some rocky mountains and, you know, life happens to yeah. all of us and being able to do life with him and have a partner um, to remind me of God's faithfulness, even on days where you don't feel it or you're wondering what God has planned for you with this detour. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've always kept that at the center. Anthony went to church with me. Um, I was a praise team senior. We go to sound check together. We pray together. Even to this day in the mornings, he'll drive to work and we'll leave the house and then get on the phone and call each other and pray. Um, and we continue to kind of just be each other's anchor, um, but knowing that God is really the orchestrated key behind all of it, um, it's really encouraging because I see him, one, of course, as my husband and my spouse, um, now the father to our daughter, but also, you know, God's son and um, how Anthony shows love, the love of Christ um, through our relationship is what even keeps me encouraged. Yeah. 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 What about for you, Anthony? I would say my faith uh, has grown a lot more uh, moving out to Texas, like, leaving everything that I knew behind, I had to rely on God because at times we, we say, okay, I can do it my way, I can do it my way. And God reminds you by your faith of, no, you're gonna do it by my way. And with faith, you just have to go and, and trust. Uh, and I still battle with that every day, trying to live life by God, but also trying to remember, like, I can't do everything on my own. I can't serve everybody on my own. So I have to remember, in my marriage, my wife and my child comes first in that order. So I know that my child is always going to be good, but I also have to remember to take care of her. And by that faith, knowing that I have to take care of her, God is going to provide no matter what. Yeah. Whether it's monetary, a roof over my head, food, how are we going to survive? God is always going to be my number one answer when it comes to my faith. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So what is something that you appreciated about your single season? Ooh, Freedom. <laughs> so uh, freedom because as a single woman, 
You have so much time. And I look back on that phase of my life, that season of my life, and I think about being, made, being able to just wake up early or wake up late, go to sleep late, you know, go hang out with friends. I used to go to a lot of revivals and seminars, workshops, conferences. I stayed at somebody's birthday dinner, birthday party, whatever the case may be. I really made the most out of my singleness, I think. There was always a desire for companionship. Yeah. I was always a serious dater, even in college. Like, you had to really come correct, you know, with me, or I wasn't really giving you the time of day. I was reading, you know, Heather Lindsay's Pink Lips, Empty Hearts, and, you know, I'm P31 status, yeah. and the only man after uh, my heart is God, and chasing after God's heart. So, uh, doing Jesus dates and all of that. So, But I really appreciated that time because I found out so much of myself. I feel like being married now, being a mom now, I'm even discovering Raquel all over again, mm. but the foundation of who Raquel was as a single woman really has propelled me into who I am now. And so making the most out of that season was crucial looking back on it because uh, I enjoyed so much of that. I learned a lot about myself and I was able to really pursue um, my passion and my purpose without yeah. interruption. And so now seasons look different. Like I'm a mom now, I'm a wife now, I have to take care of home. And so I can still pursue that purpose, but it looks a bit different. Yeah. So I encourage any single woman, like love your time, um, have the desire, but don't forfeit, you know, your season trying to get to the next one. That's excellent. Yes. Yeah. So what about you, Anthony? How has having a child had an effect on your marriage? Uh, having a child effect on my marriage? Uh, I would say the balancing of time. Spending quality time with Raquel and Chan. And still, I think I'm struggling with this every year. I always say I need to find time for me, mm -hmm. self-care for me, because I don't take a lot of time for myself. I constantly do for everybody. Her father, hey, can you help me fix this? Can you help me build that? Hey, aunt, we got this going on this weekend. Hey, Chan is not feeling well. We need to make sure she's good or she is spending time with her. And I think I look back at just the, the situation that happened with Kobe lately, just the realization of a father and daughter, mm -hmm. how it could have been me with my daughter flying somewhere. Just looking at how I really just value the time that I have to spend with my family because it can be gone in a matter of a second. Yeah. Not knowing that what life has. And it goes back to that question with faith. You have to know that God is going to take care of you and your family no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you can't live life in fear of not being you. Yeah. So just balancing time for myself, family, and, and just that. That order. Yeah. Are both of you guys' parents still together? No, no. So no. we both came from single parent homes. And that was one of the even uh, reasons I was drawn to Anthony when we began dating. We both came from similar backgrounds. We both had hardworking mothers that worked two, three jobs, uh, you know, lived in humble means and sometimes went without. And so we made it a vow years ago, like, we are rewriting the history for our family. We are breaking the generational curse of divorce and, uh, you know, just ha a happy home. Yeah. You know, we, we both didn't see that. And one of my fears when we were engaged was, okay, I'm about to get married, but I've never seen a successful marriage in my home. So how can I become this wife if I have not seen that in my home? And same for him. And I had to get rid of that fear. Like, okay, Raquel, that's what not, that's not what you were raised in, but this is what God has purposed you for now. And yeah. so you can determine what that home looks like. Yeah. So Anthony, how has it been for you not having that in your home to now you having to be the head of your household, a father, what has helped you prepare for this role? I would say uh, growing up, I really did not have a father growing up. So for me, I've learned a lot of my life lessons through my mom and my sisters. Mm -hmm. So with me learning how to love a woman, I had to learn that way. But the hardest part for me, uh, you're never alone without a father because you have God first and then 
you surround yourself by positive males. So when you surround yourself by positive males, and when I say positive males, men that are married, if that's what you want, if you desire marriage, you find a man that's married and you learn from him. Right. And you you ask for the honest truths, not the, hey, how's marriage? And he's not going to tell you things that you're going to go through. Because everybody goes through something and it's similar, but it's also different. And how you may handle it is different how I may handle it because your spouse is different from their spouse. Mm. But just that wisdom of soaking up some of the ways that you're going to go through life and you're going to have those people. So men that are seeking marriage, surround yourself by married men. Surround yourself by positive married men. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, the men that are going through divorce, you got to ask, why are they going through divorce? Why I can stay away from that? How can I look and see what you've done wrong and do it better in the right way? Right. Seek Learn God first. So that's how I look at it. When you look for marriage, you surround yourself by positive married people. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so Raquel, um, so I know that you waited um, to be intimate until you got married. So how was it communicating to Anthony that you were a virgin before you guys got married? Ooh, when did we have that conversation? I want to say I had that conversation with him pretty up front. I mean, by you all when means. When first started dating, you yeah. had that conversation like, with It wasn't the first date question. Like, yeah. don't tell the brother on the first date, you know. Right. Uh, but just as you feel led. Uh, and, and from the jump, I had, uh, you know, uh, other guys that were interested in me um, before I met Anthony, they may have been interested, and I always made that known, like, hey, I don't want to waste your time. Right. This is something that is important to me. Uh, I've made it this long, like, you know, so if, th if this is not what you're looking for, then that's totally okay. Yeah. I would hate to drag it out, and then, you know, then he find yeah, out later. Yeah, so with Anthony, I knew, you know, all the other things added up, and so I felt comfortable to share with him, like, what, you know, I was planning to do and yeah. what my intentions had been. And he totally respected it. Uh, he was always a gentleman. Um, and he really even affirmed, like, my journey. And that was really special for me. And it was really important to me. I think it even uh, made me care about him even more uh, just to see his selflessness in that mm -hmm. and for us to also find other ways to still pursue intimacy. We were also long distance. So I feel like the Lord was looking out for me anyway. <laughs> like, yeah. okay, he's not here. But then when he, you know, he would travel and we would see each other, of course it was hard, but I feel like God set it up like that for a reason anyway. Yeah. Okay, so Anthony, were you a virgin before you guys got married? I was not. You weren't. So when she told you, was your reaction like, oh, okay, or how was that? Uh, first reaction was kind of like, you're lying. Like, in my mind, it's like, he you're did lying. Not believe me. I, I did not. <laughs> But <laughs> so you ain't never. Like, I mean, so nah. you like it's like no, like okay. he's always trying to find these questions. So a a after a while, like just really sitting out listening, it's like for me, I'm like, yo, she's dope and she brings more to the table than that. And mm. for me, when I look at somebody bringing more to the table, it's like that 80 20 rule. What that 20 percent? Do I really just say okay, I want to go for this 20 percent? I value that 80. So I was like, she brings more to my life than just that. Yeah. Because after a while, we like, okay, we're going to test drive the car. And then you test drive the car, and then you're done test driving the car. It's kind of like, okay, this oh, what else is keeping me here? Mm -hmm. So for me, I was like, one thing that I valued about our relationship was the fact that she made me work for everything. Mm -hmm. It was never just here, this is this, this is that. And I'm glad that she made me do that because everything that I grew up on, I had to work for everything in life. It was never, hey, Anthony, here's a new car. Here's whatever that is. So for me to understand what you work for, you understand the value in keeping it and making sure it stays well. Yeah. And you do anything possible to make sure that person stays happy. So yeah. I'm and So glad. you were willing to stick it out. You were willing to wait for her and honor her. Exactly. With this, this is awesome. Thank yeah. You. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, you're just a positive example for your daughter. And yes. you'll be able to say, look, you know, I did this and I was able to make, meet a man that waited um, because I know that people are sometimes shy to express that they're a virgin or to communicate that in a relationship or they feel like someone won't want to pursue them mm -hmm. because they're still a virgin but 
something that I really love about you guys' story is that you really were pursuing her. And not only did you pursue her, you moved to where she was and you met her father and you continue to take those steps um, in the relationship. So I think that's beautiful. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you for having me. Yes. So thank you everyone for tuning in to this episode of Dating with Purpose. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the share button and make sure you're subscribed. And if you guys want to keep in touch with Anthony and Raquel, are you guys on social media? We are, but it's all pictures of my kids. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) You can follow. (laughs) Yeah. So so what is your social media? Uh, Just at Raquel McBay. So R-A-C-Q-U-E-L-M-C-B-A-Y. Yes. So you'll get to see pictures of the cute baby. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.